Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old-school RuneScape video. Alright, let's be honest. Slayer might possibly be the most popular skill in the game because of how profitable it can be at higher levels. The other side of the coin is that for you to get there, early levels will take an ungodly amount of time with barely any valuable items as drops. If you've ever paid attention to your experience per hour, if you train the skill casually, you might be lucky if you're getting 30k even with Slayer-specific monsters. This is a lot slower than other skills people seem to dislike such as mining and agility just to mention a few. So today, I will give you 10 tips in order to speed up your gains, and so you can finally access that Slayer boss you have been waiting for. If you guys enjoyed this upload, we've been putting out weekly videos and daily live streams. so if you enjoy the content, a subscription with notifications on would be really appreciated. And you can also join our Discord server for guidance and to interact with our amazing community. As I commonly do for these types of videos, my only disclaimer is that these tips will be for you to speed up your Slayer training, but if you follow most of them, experience per hour might not increase dramatically. This will be a set of steps to follow in order to optimize time, so you can focus on your Slayer trips and gain more experience by becoming more efficient before, during, and after your trips. That being said, let's begin. The very first tip is going to be something that will most likely be active by default, but I'll explain why you might want to turn it off or even keep it on. By talking to any Slayer Master, you can tell them to discuss the difficulty of your tasks, and you can request to stop taking your combat level into account when assigning a task for you to do. This means that if you go to your preferred Slayer Master and your combat level is low enough, certain tasks will be off the table until you get a few more combat levels in order for you to have a better time. As you can probably imagine, this can be a double-edged sword. If you're a low level and are given a difficult task, it will take a disgusting amount of time for you to fully complete it. And at lower levels, set monsters might not even give you a lot of experience to show for all of your work. On the other hand, if you want to tougher challenges and start experiencing a higher variety of targets, you may want to try this out. If you end up disabling this just to give it a try, you can reactivate it at any given moment by talking to any Slayer Master and your tasks will go back to normal. The second tip is related to your bank, and this will help you so much when it comes to organizing your stuff, which will naturally lead to faster preparation time for your Slayer tasks. If you are using Runelite, go ahead and activate the Bank Tabs plugin, and download an external plugin called the Bank Tags Layout. You will notice a sidebar appear on the left side of your bank. By clicking on the plus sign, you can create a new category of items, assign an icon to it, and then drag and drop items to the tab for you to filter them when clicking on the tab you just made. Once all of your items are in the tab, you can reorganize them in the equipment and inventory layout for you to know what to wear for every single task. In the early levels, you might only need a general melee, ranged, and magic tab, but later down the road, when tasks become more specific, you might want to have a setup even for individual tasks, and specifically for slayer bosses or even general bossing. This has helped me so much in terms of preparing for my next tasks, as I don't have to wander around my bank remembering what to bring for each adventure. Naturally, this can also help you with anything related to bank organization for any activity you can think of. On related to Slayer, I have a bank tabs for farm runs, my outfit for videos, barrows, farming ecumenical keys, and so on. The next one is also related to your bank, and this is the last one for now because we're not really in a banking video. <clears throat> Although, you can let me know in the comments if you would like an updated bank organization video. Anyway, brainstorming aside, other than your gear, I recommend having a tab for all of your loot, and organize it in whatever way makes sense for you to know what you have at all times. My loot tab starts with Ensoul Heads, Dark Totems, and a great variety of miscellaneous rune items dropped by many higher level monsters in the game. We continue with dragon items, stackable items, resources dropped by random monsters, and even some higher level bosses like ores, bars, raw food. And finally, I have boss unique drops, and the way to know where they start is with their stuffed head or something else related to it. You can see I have drops for Vorkath, Cerberus, Abyssal Sire, the Dagonoth Kings, and many more for me to just dump my inventory after a trip, and then go right back into action. You will see that the bottom part of this tab is pretty messy, and it's because these are just random drops from bosses I don't really camp too often. So, there's no problem in having unorganized spots for all of these. Whenever it's time to sell your spoils on the Grand Exchange, or even High Alk or Prosodim if you're an Iron Man, you will have a neat view of everything you have been hoarding in your many hours of Slayer. Okay, okay, banking aside, we are now going to turn our attention to efficient traveling, and of course, we will go to the Slayer Master of our choice. 
If a quick banking and getting ready for a Slayer task is one thing to do to maximize efficiency, going to grab a task will also save plenty of time. I will tell you what I personally do, and then a lot of options available for you to get back to your current Slayer Master quickly. I use Steve if I'm looking for a Jad or a Zuck task, Konar if I want Hydra tasks, and Duradel for general high-level monsters and a great experience and profit per hour. To get them, I have my Royal Seed Pod or Spirit Tree in my house, Arata's Blessing 4 in order to go to Mount Karum, and my Karamja Globs 4 to go to Duradel on limited amount of times. On screen right now you are seeing a bunch of useful and even low-level teleportation methods to all of the Slayer Masters you might want to keep in your inventory when doing a quick succession of tasks. Of course, for you to go down in the time spent traveling around. Keep them on you to get another task as soon as you can. Now, okay, hold on a minute. I can already see you typing your comment like, okay, this is straight up troll, what about the NPC contact spell in the Lunar Spellbook? Well, that's exactly what this tip will end up with. If you've done the Lunar Diplomacy quest, you can change to that spellbook and also bring Astral, Cosmic and Air runes in order to cast the spell to talk to any Slayer Master you have previously talked to for another task. Remember that this is only useful to get a new one, and if you want to manage your Slayer rewards, you will strictly have to go to any Slayer Master to do so. Now, the first tip that will actually start getting us more Slayer experience per hour and not simply telling you how to maximize your efficiency, will be to buy a cannon and a bunch of cannonballs for you to place at many areas surrounded by Slayer monsters in order to kill them quicker and of course get a ridiculous amount of both Slayer and ranged experience. For a lot of you this will sound pretty obvious, but remember that not every Everyone might know about it because they don't spend 18 hours a day on a pixelated game like you and I. So for the uninitiated, do the quest the Dwarf Cannon and buy yourself, well, a cannon, either north of Falador or on the Grand Exchange. You may also buy cannonballs there or make them yourself with cannonball molds and steel bars, but fair warning, this is going to be pretty slow. Some of the best places to use a cannon for quick tasks are the Lighthouse for Dagonauts, North of the Fremenic Isles for Trolls, the Mire Ditch Laboratories for Blood Bells after completion of Sins of the Father, and many more, some of which you are seeing on screen right now. Obviously, this is for people who might have a little bit of extra cash laying around and want to get Slayer over with quicker. So keep in mind that this is not exactly cheap. And more often than not, you won't even get your money back in terms of drops. So, buy as many cannonballs as you're comfortable using, or make them yourself for some extra smithing experience. Up next we have your block list and also tasks you may want to cancel. I'll explain how this works and then I'll tell you what I personally do. If you go to the wiki, each master has their own list of tasks they can assign. For this example, I'm gonna show you Duradel's assignments. The rightmost column you're looking at is a chance of getting a specific task, and at the bottom you have the total amount of these which is called the weight. Think of it as a simple percentage, and for Duradel it is 301 points. Now imagine you want an Abyssal Demon task. Without blocked tasks, Abyssal Demons have a weight of 12 which is the highest one for Duradel. So if you have a 12 in 301 chance of getting an Abyssal Demon, this is roughly a 4% chance. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but considering you have all of these other tasks to work with, this is statistically the most common task for Duradel. On the lower end we have Water Fiends, for example. With a weight of just 2, the chance of getting this task will be a measly 0.6%. So how do all of these numbers help us get faster Slayer experience? For you to get great tasks, you might want to play around with your points when it comes to blocking or even cancelling tasks you may not like. But you should look at them this way. If there's a common task like Black Demons you simply dislike for whatever reason, blocking them might be a good idea. If there's an uncommon task you also hate, like for example Mutated Zygomites, cancelling will be a lot better than blocking them since they are not really that common for Duradel. Now obviously this all depends on what you find enjoyable and of course cancelling bad tasks will naturally give you more experience. This is my block list and you will notice that Drakes and Worms are on the list. This is because when hunting for the Hydra task, these two are super common with Conor, which I simply don't like, and I really don't want to cancel them that often. On the other hand, we will now cover tasks to extend and unlock. 
Once you have enough Slayer points to spare after unlocking Bigger and Badder and the Slayer Helmet, you may want to look into extending some amazing tasks for both experience and money per hour. A lot of the options for the extended task list are pretty troll, especially for late and endgame accounts, such as Suquas, Cave Horrors, and Aber Inspectors, but some of the monsters on this list will be absolutely insane for more experience if you choose to spend your points to have longer tasks. Some of my favorite ones are Bloodvelds, Dust Devils, Gargoyles, Necreals, Abyssal Demons, and the Krakens, just to name a few. And just like the previous tip, this all depends on what you personally find enjoyable. If you don't like killing Bloodvelds for whatever reason, even with a new area to cannon them for disgusting experience per hour, you can simply not extend it and stick to the default amount. On the other hand, if you are looking to get 99 Slayer or any other level of your target goal, there are some tasks you may want to prioritize as you can even burst them in the catacombs of Corinth such as Necreals and Dust Devils, which you can complete in under an hour or even less. There are tasks you specifically need to unlock to have an assignment, and you can turn them off at any given point, but your points are not going to be refunded. Tasks such as Red and Mithril Dragons, Avian Seas, a Lizardmen will all be optional, and you won't even have to worry about them if you don't unlock them at the shop. So, again, prioritize what you personally enjoy. Now, we come to a tip that will most likely get me a lot, and I mean a lot of flame in the comments, and I might even get socially crucified for this. So, here we go. If you're looking for fast Slayer experience, I highly recommend you skip on bossing until you have reached your goal or even that sought-after Slayer cape. On my way to maxing, I did barely any bossing because I was just focused on killing as many monsters as possible. And even if you love bossing, we have to agree that it's not the most efficient thing to do when it comes to experience per hour. Profit might be decent, of course, but if you are killing bosses for tasks, your gains might be slightly reduced. Even if you can't consistently kill Slayer bosses in record time, they will be nowhere near some of the best tasks in comparison. If you want to start gathering some PVMing experience on your way to 99 Slayer or even just maxing, obviously go right ahead. But in order to do it quickly, which is the point of this video, bossing is honestly not the way to go and is something you might want to save up for later once you can finally start playing the game. After I maxed, I personally only had recorded boss KCs at the Dagonoth Kings, the Caliphate Queen, and even just the Kraken as I tried all of these out, but again, if you want to camp a boss as soon as you meet the requirements to do so, nobody is going to stop you. So, go have fun, and get those drops. The runner-up spot is something that may not be that useful early on, but at higher levels it might be incredibly helpful, however, it will be another double-edged sword situation, and it is Turiel boosting. As you know, Slayer tasks from all Slayer Masters except from Turiel and Spyro will give you Slayer points to spend at the shop. Also common knowledge is that you will get extra points for your task number 10, 50, 100, 250, and finally 1000. A common strategy to gather points quicker is to ask a Turiel for 9 tasks, and then do your 10th task at your preferred Slayer Master for a ton of quick points instead of getting them naturally. This is important because Turiel will assign incredibly weak monsters, and every single task can be done in as little as even 5 minutes. As opposed to, of course, going to your main Slayer Master and doing 10 tasks which might possibly take up an entire day or even multiple. You can then use these points to cancel tasks you may not want, and look for better ones which you can do quickly like the ones we've mentioned before where you can cannon or burst them. If you don't want to do this specifically, you can save up those points in the shop to unlock other rewards that will help you out in the progression of your account. Now, the double-edged sword situation I was talking about is that while this sounds quick, you are still spending a good amount of time at those easy tasks, and if you're canceling assignments too quickly, all of those hard-earned points might be chucked rather fast. So, save them up and manage them efficiently. Escapers, the final tip on this list, which is my number one suggestion for faster Slayer experience per hour, is focusing on tasks you are able to burst or barrage. What this means is going to a multi-combat area with monsters you are able to stack by moving like this, and then use a multi-target spell such as Ice Burst or Ice Barrage, and in some situations even Chin Chompas. This will make quick work of your target monster, and as you can imagine, if done correctly, it can yield unbeatable experience per hour. If I want to speedrun some tasks, I always do this at the Catacombs of Karend if I'm assigned Necreals, Dust Devils, and even Abyssal Demons, and also at the Smoke Devils since you are able to stack a bunch of them together with the use of a cannon. And speaking of, just like when we talked about the cannon, 
Remember that this method is not cheap whatsoever, and that all of the drops you get out of the monsters will help you break even in the best case scenario. So remember to pick up most of their valuable drops if doing so, and selling them later to buy more runes. As a quick side note, you don't specifically have to do this on the Slayer task, and I like to do this at Warp the Jellies when hunting for hard clue scrolls, since you can get them here relatively fast if bursting correctly. Alright Scapers, that's pretty much it for this video, thank you very much for watching, and as always, thank you very much if you made it this far. I want to give a massive thank you not only to my channel members, but also people who have been gifting memberships during livestreams. Every single one of you are absolutely amazing, and you have no idea how much your support means to me. You can click the join button below to see all of the cool perks and rewards you can get out of your monetary pledge in the videos, in the live streams, and of course in the Discord. In the next one, we will go over a skilling tier list to see how useful skills are in all aspects of the game for unrestricted and Ironman accounts. As we prepare our final video before the highly anticipated Tombs of a Mascot update, Old School RuneScape's third ever raid. You have an amazing week, and I will see you then. Pa 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 pa. Peace.